thanks for watching. And in linear algebra, you usually learn very different concepts. One to one, onto, linear independence, and span. And it turns out a bunch of those topics are related. So one to one, onto, linear independence, and span. It turns out there's this very nice relationship between one to one in linear independence and onto and span. And also, oh, by the way, remember for finite dimensions of the same dimension, those ones are also uh, equivalent. But today we just want to focus on that with this very beautiful uh, fact. So suppose V1 up to Vn is or oh, maybe the order kind of matters. So suppose we have a in linearly independent list. So suppose V1 up to Vn is linearly independent. So it's the same definition as linearly independent sets, but where the order matters. And define, oh no, mm, let me do that again. Um, so suppose uh, V1 up to Vn is a list of vectors and we're not assuming anything about whether it's linearly independent or not. So suppose you fix this list of vectors and define the following linear transformation. Define T from scalars with n entries to the vector field, which uh, sorry, vector space, which we assume is V. So suppose this is a list of vectors in V. And define it as follows. And it's really cool. Usually you take vectors and you have linear combinations. Here you do the opposite. I give you scalars and you do linear combinations. Namely, T of A1 up to AN equals A1 V1 plus dot 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 plus a and V n. So again, usually we start with V1 up to V n, but here we kind of do the opposite. I give you scalars and you give me the linear combination. So if A1 is 2, A2 is 3, A4, uh, A2 is 3, A3 is 4, then it's like 2 V1 plus 3 V2 plus 4 V3. And here's what I'm claiming, and here's a beautiful relationship between all those things. Then, first of all, T is one to one, if and only if the list is linearly independent. And again, for lists, the definition is exactly the same for linear independence. And T is onto V, if and only if the list spans V. And the proof, luckily, it's not too complicated. It's an if and only if proof. Because what does it mean for T to be one to one? That's if and only if the only way to get the zero vector is if all the A1s is a zero vector. So, right? The definition of one to one for linear transformation is the only way the output is zero is if the input is zero. In other words, the null space is trivial. But remember the definition of T. That is the same thing as saying a1 v1 plus a n v n equals 0 for a1 up to a n. And that's if and only if. This just means a1 equals 0 up to a n equals 0. But look, what is this saying? This is saying the only way a linear combination is 0 is if and only if we get the trivial linear combination. But that's the same thing as saying that this list, V1 up to Vn, is linearly independent. 
So how cool is that? So one to one is the same thing as linear independence and in a completely analogous way, we can show that t is onto if and only if, let's see, it means that for every v in v, v is t of something, a1 up to an for some ai in your field. And by definition, it means uh, for every v in v, v is a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n for some scalars in your field. And that's just the same as saying uh, for every, uh, I mean, that just means that the span of v1 up to vn equals uh, v. It just says, given any vector here, you can find write v as a linear combination of that list. And that's just the same thing as saying v1 up to vn spans v. And then we're done. So onto is the same as spans in this case, and one to one is the same thing as linear independence. Which is again another beautiful thing that relates one to one onto linear independence and span. All right, I hope you like this little math cookie. If you want to see more math and more linear algebra, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. All right, thank you.